There we go. Okay, um, so welcome to our session about one size fits all. It's about one platform, strategy, training, and support for 80 websites for the state of North Carolina. And I'm Elena Talanker. I'm a digital services manager for the platform. I'm Liz Vines. I'm the account manager and the lead trainer for the platform. And we've both worked there for like four or five years. Um, yeah. and grew it a lot. And uh, it's all, um, I will talk about our team mm -hmm. a little bit later. And then I'll talk about training and community. And here's our outline. So we want to share our experience building, hosting a platform for 80 state government websites, how we use digital strategy to help agencies create their content and deliver it on the, our platform, how we are training our 2,000 content creators, and how we are building community behind it, kind of mirroring what Drupal is doing. So first, a little history. So our platform is called Digital Commons, and it was uh, established in 2015 for a set of the um, cabinet level uh, websites, and it was done by a vendor, but since then, uh, the platform grew. And as you hear, we have 80 sites now, and we have completely in-house development. So we have 12 people, 13, but going back to 12, <laughs> are really devoted to what they do for the state government. And uh, we host uh, this platform on AWS in-house. We build the platform, we have developers team, and we help, we work with agencies to help them on board on the platform to, um, to improve their uh, websites, update them, Everything is done uh, by this group. And last year, uh, Matt Clark and Mark Colbank, our developers, presented here, and their presentations are, are linked uh, from the slide uh, about the how they actually build this new platform. It's a modern uh, bootstrap um, platform, um, really, um, shifted presentation of the state government website. So we started with this year when we have all our uh, state websites on one theme, on one code base. We build a lot of accessibility into the core of the platform and we are now on Drupal 9 and going to be on Drupal 10 in a month. So uh, why one platform and why we think that one size fits all? Every time um, we come to um, DrupalCon, we hear all these presentations, how people are learning to build sites. And it's like one site for this, part one site for this particular agency. And then they go to another site and they start it all over. So our concept is, because it's state government, we want to help use the goodness of all the effort we put into the platform and share with everybody. So platform build model, uh, mobile first, and it's really strong in accessibility because uh, we had um, several private companies um, reviewing our platform. So everything what was identified as a result of some um, lawsuits was built into the platform at the core. So it's delivered to any agency. It's definitely faster loading, uses less data, we use modern technology. It is secure on the state AWS uh, and um, it, there is a lot of cost efficiency in this approach because agencies don't need to go spend money to stand up their own site supported, hosted, and so on. And it's, we are really working to make it application integration ready. It means everything we are using within the platform, the accessibility approach, the best practices on how content should be presented, 
we're trying to push it for the applications that link from the websites. Because often we all use state government websites for different reasons. And you go to the <laughs> site, the site looks okay, and then you click on application and you get back in uh, 2020 um, framework and it's really sad. So we are trying to promote it. And also we are uh, on our, all the websites now really promote um, that it is a state government website. So uh, in the heading, every website has a privacy note and uh, this information provided. There are definitely a lot of challenges we face, pushing everybody under one uh, kind of umbrella. So um, main challenge is to to prove to agencies that our template could support all their goals and needs, that we have it all. They come from different audiences they need to support. They come from different tasks and often uh, different leadership ideas. So this is the biggest challenge we have. But we are very proud of what we have developed with this team. And we think with so many years in the state government, we learned a lot and we kind of beefed everything into the platform to have um, all the support that's needed. So I mentioned that um, one of our really strong tools is digital strategy. So what we do, we offer user and stakeholder surveys to agencies if their current sites use analytics, um, then uh, we would um, really dive into this research as well. We help them to own their content better because this is what we learned um, from many websites. Um, government creates a lot of content. Everybody thinks it's very important, it should be pushed there. But time goes, content gets outdated and um, a lot of information, nobody knows who owns it. Who put it here? Nobody knows. So when we are onboarding agencies on our websites, we really help them to identify who owns this particular section of their website. So these people could be trained on the platform and it really creates more um, updated, more, it pushes them to, to look at the content more often and kind of own it. We build personas, and these are um, underlined links, so you, uh, if you look at the presentation, feel free to check these pages. We build personas for North Carolina um, flagman uh, site, flagship site, and c.gov, because we own it too. It's on our platform. So we worked, uh, um, actually, it was recent uh, uh, project where we looked at the analytics, we looked at um, uh, statistics, everything we could find about who lives in North Carolina, who visits North Carolina. We really tried to create personas that would help us build the site that is useful for people who visit it. And these personas have, it, it's not like somebody's, uh, it's not only what people do, but we also build in a lot of accessibility needs into the personas. So when we are reviewing, um, when we are using personas to identify how this web particular website is going to present information, we think about people who are using assistive devices. We think about people who have um, special needs, for example, lower reading rates and so grades and so on. To present our information architecture, because we need often before the website is done, this needs to be presented to leadership in the agencies. So and. We are fine with the spreadsheet, but leadership doesn't like the spreadsheet. So we discovered a really cool tool called Slick Plan, which helps you convert your spreadsheet into a graph presentation where you can actually build your future information architecture with a lot of details 
and a lot of uh, useful um, small things. You can rearrange it easily, and the best of all, you can share it with anyone. So this is a good tool we um, use as well. And our secret weapon is our uh, very rich and robust content library, uh, content types library. This is where we worked to help identify special different needs that state agencies have and cover it all. We think so, but um, it's, always, uh, it's always changing. And we love Drupal uh, views and web forms, but we also created some of them by default. Things that people often use, like reach to your web manager or um, request a, um, some information from our um, media department or something. Things like that are already created as default. And um, something I wanted to mention that um, I see that at conversations in Drupal this year, a lot of people are looking more into digital strategy now because Drupal is so rich and there are so many ways to, to build the site, but why redo it? Why, <laughs> uh, why repeat every time when there are great examples which you can reuse? And this is how um, uh, in this uh, quote that um, uh, Charles Ames said that um, design could be a plan for arranging elements uh, to accomplish a particular purpose. And this is what we are doing with our digital strategy and helping agencies present their information through different design ideas based on our platform. Uh, everybody on our team really well versed into what platform can do. So this is how we enforce best practices and design ideas on agencies. And this is how we help them really tell their story and present it um, to public. So these are the content types which we have currently on the platform. And we are adding from time to time when <laughs> um, we have a particular case, we would add something. But these are really powerful. Uh, this is a very powerful library which supports uh, 80 sites needs and needs for the state government agencies pretty well. And when I talk about um, different types of agencies, we there are variety of agencies. There are some that are served just state government in between uh, different agencies' needs. There are some that are for all um, 10 or 11 million millions now of North Carolinians. And uh, there are a lot of recreational sites which are on our platform as well. Though, uh, so we have this wonderful pro, uh, platform that we present, but everybody said that customer is always right. So our mantra is not exactly, because sometimes it takes a lot of education and it takes community to help people understand that this solution really is for them. And this is what um, probably all these years that we didn't present at DrupalCon, it was because we thought that, um, oh, we are still learning because I, went first to DrupalCon in 2018, I think Liz in 2017, and we've been learning, we've been enjoying this community, and we are trying to get back, but this is our first presentation uh, for Drupal, and uh, we think our platform has a lot of potential for and good examples that should be shared. So, what we are doing now, I mentioned that agencies are often come with some use cases, then they need something additional. So we created Teams channel where anybody from agency uh, web managers can go and put their 
uh, requests for super popular, absolutely requested capability that they need. So this is how we build how-to content type, which is very popular now in the world among the governments. I think um, Gov UK started it. This is a guide uh, type approach to present information. So there is uh, steps that where you learn about information and then you are pushed into a transactional solution if you need. Uh, we are also working now on the contact info block, really styled, um, recognizable uh, content where people can find all the information about particular people or agency, how to contact them. We are really moving forward toward building a future constituent portal. And we are, because we are so lucky now to have 80 agencies on one platform, so we are syndicating how to content type pages to NCGov. So somebody is going to NCGov and they are searching for food stamps. And they see this wonderful uh, styled, organized page, um, how to get to this program. But actually, cons content is pushed from the health department website because the page is housed there. So this is how we are combining everything and sharing on nc.gov. And our, we are really hoping to get uh, Mansida to help us improve uh, quality and accessibility of the websites because we have wonderful platform. We guide our agencies on how to build it, but there is all this human error and uh, there is humans who are putting this content there. So uh, here are a couple of examples of the sites. I mentioned that we have websites there any constituent person could be an audience. We have agency-based, uh, more specific uh, state government websites, and we have some lovely museums, and uh, we, we, all, we are proud to have state parks on our platform as well. And with that, I will show you a couple of our sites. They all look different. They use media differently. They all try to um, create their, share their ideas different way. And they all part of the Digital Commons family. And with that, we have Liz to tell you about training. So Alina um, did a great job talking about our one size um, fits all. But how we begin that is um, we have a very s standard project process for them that every agency goes through. It's the same process. And then training is where it starts. Um, our team trains every member of the web teams on all those 80 sites. We're also training, um, you know, when people turn over, maybe somebody's new duties include web content, um, and so we're training that way as well. Um, what's important about our training is that 90% of the people um, who are using our content management system, which is Drupal, are going to be non-technical. So our first job is to have them relax, <laughs> like you can do this and put content on a website. Um, it's customized, of course, for our Digital Commons platform, and um, it's consistent for all the users across the state. That's important. So if you were trained two years ago or if you're trained today, the training will be similar. It will be new and updated, but everybody gets to learn the same concept. So we're sure that they can get that content on their website. We also deliver to multiple permission levels. So everybody doesn't have the same access on all the sites. How do we deliver it? Continuous improvement and community are some of the things I'm going to highlight uh, for the rest of the session. Um, this is our training site. We actually built a site so that we can train users so that they can get their hands. I always mix up hands dirty and feet wet. Let's get your hands <laughs> dirty, right, in your kitchen feet yeah. wet. 
Um, but that's one of, we, we survey them after every training and one of the highest rated areas of satisfaction is that they get to spend about 30 minutes in the training to just start messing around with it. Um, and this is the site that we use to do that. Um, we train them, um, it's role-based training. We, you're gonna see a little bit later our, our progression of how training progressed, but again, we offer a couple levels. There's an advanced training and a basic. Basic is a high level introduction to the site so that if you have minimal permissions, you're still able to get content on and um, not make any mistakes. Permissions I talked about, I see I put park rangers on here. They're an example of one of our content types as an alert. A park ranger for NC State Parks does not need to be able to add content to a menu, do a URL redirect. They might only need to create an alert. If they're out in the park, there's a log on a trail that's blocking it, they can quickly add an alert to their website, and that's all they need to be able to do. So that's what I mean by permission-based. We have five permissions that give you varying levels of, um, five roles that give you varying levels of permission. Um, in the training, I already mentioned, we give real life examples to demonstrate the capabilities. We're gonna take them through those 12 content types that Elena talked about so that they get familiar with what to use for when. When do I use um, a catalog? When do I need, well obviously the blog content type is obvious, but when do I need a site page, a landing page? Um, I mentioned the active participation. And we're moving into um, updating our training materials. That's something that I feel like this team has always been about continuous improvement in every way. Um, we started out with, you guys will hear a bunch of us going to training, we did some video snippets, and now we're on to something called Articulate Rise 360, and this is e-learning, so that they don't have to be in the classroom for this. It enables us to quickly push out um, when there's a new feature, we can quickly get some training out to the whole platform at once. Like Elena mentioned, 2,000 people, we can't get them up to speed on a new feature by training them individually in that way. Um, and this is what that looks like, the Articulate Rise 360. Um, we went through a theme change about a year and a half ago, a beautiful new theme, um, and that was happened fast. Matter of fact, Elena um, talked about the two developers. I think it's funny if you look at um, Matt Clark's um, pr presentation here, he talks about how he pushed us faster than we were ready to go. But our team did rise to the occasion. And one of the ways we did that was putting together this e-learning um, so that everybody could hear or learn what was new with the theme, what changed, and then some of the fun features that are going to come along with the new theme. Um, we also have a support site. Um, as I noted, a lot of our content creators are non-technical. So this support site um, has a fantastic data table in alphabetical order. They can almost search anything how to do anything on the, all the sites. Uh, what this, um, and so this way, if you don't update information weekly or monthly or whatever, you can come here to get refreshed and um, be able to go update content on your site. Uh, the continuous improvement as the platform grows for training. Like I mentioned, we brought training as a part of this presentation because we do think it's key um, to having that one platform, but everybody needs to know the same thing. In 2018, we had uh, 40 sites training. We were all sort of still getting used to the platform. Five people came to training, one person presented, and the other five roved the audience to help. Um, by 2019, we were up to 50 sites. Elena and I narrowed training down <laughs> to just needing two of us. Um, and we got, we moved from three trainings to two trainings, realizing we only needed a basic and an advanced, maybe not this intermediate one. Um, like I mentioned, our focus broadened. We realized that we were getting consistent questions from the community, so we incorporated those things into the training. And that's when we were using the video snippets. Um, by 2020, we had 65 sites. And as you guys can probably imagine, we had to change training from in-person like this to Teams, which meant we could train fewer people at a time, um, but still deliver to them the consistency so they could get everything. So by having smaller groups, we were able to um, talk to them more, you know, because it's online, right? Talk to them more, I give them a good break <laughs> so that 
um, you know, because you can get fatigued too learning a lot of information sitting in front of a screen. And right now, as we've mentioned ad nauseum, we have 80 plus sites, <laughs> um, 2,000 content creators, and like I said, we're about to really make a push for Articulate to get in there and help us out. Um, community, transitioning. We feel, we, we talked about training, but we feel like training continues. One of the things we've done is really look at Drupal as a model, um, and we think creating relationships with all the agencies helps us as well. They have a lot of trust in us and a lot of faith. Um, so I'll be talking about some of the things that we do. We do retrospectives. We are an agile team. Um, we use the scrum ceremonies, and so we just sort of took from that. Obviously, our team has our retrospective, but we also have retrospectives at the end of every new website project where we talk to the agencies, find out what went well, what didn't go well, and then it also serves for me as a first account meeting with that team. So they start to understand that they're not going to be left at the end of the project. We continue to meet with them. Um, we do have those regular account meetings. We have a web advisory group, which is staff from some of those agencies who work with us to help what features should be pushed. You know, um, we're, if we're thinking about um, adding, is this something they feel like they'd use? If we want to take something away from the platform, you know, are they going to be upset about it? So that's pretty great. And of course, our development is dependent on user stories from our agency's partners. Um, I don't know if it was clear when Elena mentioned it, but we're sort of two halves, the developers and then we call ourselves the services side. These user stories are where it's important for us to come together. Um, I was really interested in seeing Mac's presentation because it was just all development. Um, but it's important to see this side as well. Um, and if we weren't there to say to them, no, this is more important, you know, user stories are important, but I think hearing from us how the content creators use the platform really helps. I just think it's a, it's a big addition to why our community is what it is. Um, these are the four things that we do. We have lunch and learns. We have statewide events. We were, I think, leaders in the Teams channel. We started our Teams channel in September of 2019, and then I mentioned the web advisory group. Um, we hold quarterly lunch and learns. We invite all of the content, I mean, the web managers of all the agencies we give them platform updates, and then we just sort of hang out with them. You know, again, we want them to talk to each other because that way we don't always have to be forward to help. We want to give them an opportunity to um, learn from each other, and we do that um, with the Teams channel as well. The Gov, we are in CGov conference. You see Elena and I sporting our personally purchased T-shirts, by the way. <laughs> That's how much we love the platform. Um, our last event, we had 130 state employees um, from more than 40 agencies. Again, we can connect, but we also present timely information about what's going on in the space. Like I said, we're heavily influenced by Drupal with this. Um, and it also allows us to promote the product. We don't do any real advertising. People find us, and these kind of events are probably one of the ways they do that. Here's what that event looked like. Um, and then I mentioned our con comment, our ninja channel. Wow, we're almost done. Our um, ninjas channel. You can't see it, but this makes me so happy. Um, we put all of every every time a new agency comes on board, we add their web managers to this Teams channel, and then this is where after training we sort of direct them for can I do this questions, how to questions, not bugs. We have a ticketing system for bugs and things like that. But this is like your first line if you are if you don't know how to do something or if something is acting wonky, you come on here and you can't see it, but like just this one question, people from three different agencies across the state are talking about it. Um, and that just makes me so happy. Um, and so summing up, um, I think we said secret sauce a lot, but <laughs> we do believe relationships are our secret sauce. Um, staying with the agency, working them, working on them with digital strategy, training them, and then staying in touch with them um, has really sort of, I feel like, elevated our platform. Um, and we're excited that we got to share that with you guys today. Um, if you want to reach out to us, you can find Elena at NCDIT. Her information is there. Um, I, however, am leaving for um, federal government. I'll, I'll be starting a new job at NIH.
um, at the end of the month. So that's my um, Drupal.org um, information if you want to catch me there. Any questions? I'm sorry that we took all the time. Any questions? Or do we? I don't know. Okay, good. Thanks, you guys. Oh, you have a question? Sure. Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, sounds like a really neat platform. Uh, I, I work at a, a, a firm, so it's interesting to hear how in-house teams do this. I um, mm -hmm. really like how you've got like, the strategy component that seems really mm -hmm. smart. Um, so I guess, uh, is there sort of um, uh, allowance if an agency has something that is well outside of uh, the information, like an informational website need, mm -hmm. like something that's really unique, is there an allowance mm -hmm. for for either in-house team to take care of that or to work with an external vendor? Good question. <laughs> it's a very good question and it's a big issue. We have been trying this approach several times, but more and more we realized that keeping one code base, this is what really makes it easier for us. Mm -hmm. It's more secure and more stable. So any forks are prohibited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This, because we are close team and because I think we have some successes, we are trying to present to management this approach. And so far, uh, we have been lucky to stay within. If agency has needs and they can present their case, adding something to the platform, and we often evaluate, would it be useful for like yeah, other right. agencies? And then we would put our development into adding this um, particular item to the platform. This is how Catalog was built. So several agencies, they're asking, and you can see Catalog actually on ncparks.gov. Um, it's a really neat feature and it's really popular now among any, uh, many agencies, but it started that with one request. So this is how we are trying to approach it. The reason, as I mentioned, making it secure, making it stable, when you bring contractor, people often have different ideas, or there are so many ways to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And then, who is going to support it? They are leaving and we are inheriting it, and this is why we're not really liking this mm -hmm. approach. And that's actually, I think, one of the benefits to us because you do have people rotate. Um, we showed some of the high-level agencies, but we do have commissions, a few boards who are on the platform, and especially those type agencies, if they, which they used to do before 2015, get it spun up by an outside agency. Those people know how to do it. Those people move on. New people come in, and we had people contact us going, we can't get into our website. Like, how do we do that? So when it's on our platform, you will always have somebody who can access it, keep it going. Uh, and then I kind of have a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. uh, one, we do a lot of work with Duke, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, Duke has uh, some uh, sort of analogous uh, multi-site that the School of Medicine put together. Um, and uh, you know, that's very much like it is optimized for doing these certain things, does it very well, got a lot of support structure around that. Uh, but that's kind of for a particular type of sites. So sites that are outside of that, there is an allowance for outside agencies. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there also sort of interestingly is they actually charge the internal uh, uh, organizations for use of that platform. So I didn't know mm. if, the, if the agencies also had a, a cost to be part of this. We yep. tried. <laughs> uh, in the beginning, there would be like, they would get this big number and then, but they didn't actually have to pay it. Mm -hmm. um, so now the service is provided, but like Elena noted, you have to stay within our guidelines. You will have the, feature, the capabilities that are offered pretty much. Um, but it's a, as you guys already know, what a value, right? Mm -hmm. To get a whole free website, get that free digital strategy and training, and then continuous support, security updates. It's kind of a bargain for them. And agencies who, I would tell Elena, sometimes agencies I think are prejudiced about anything state government. They think it's not gonna be great. So you'll have some people on a particular team feel like, eh, do we have to go with them? But then, you know, once leadership hears how much it costs, they're like, oh no, we're definitely going with that.
Any other questions? Yeah. I'm curious with that many different content contributors, like how prescriptive are you with things like your, just your WYSIWYG and how that's set up? Because I work for a, not really something very similar, but an organization where we have a lot of different people with a lot of different ideas about how content should be input and what heading levels are and all that sort of thing. How much of that do you manage in the platform itself and how much of that is just kind of guidelines that you Good offer? question. Some of it we do manage um, matter of fact, we just got CK Editor 5, <laughs> and so they whittled down some of the options that are going to be available. Like already, people on our platform can't change colors of the fonts and all that stuff. So some of it is managed within team. We have co-works every Wednesday with the developers, and we talk about things like that. Um, and then the other part is training. I train them on headings. When they get trained, they get trained on best practices um, for content. Do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, and this is where I think Mansida will come helpful because these things will be identified immediately. We use editorially right now on the back end, but um, people are not um, using it actively. So it's there, it shows uh, all the um, flows. Of course, people are putting content and everybody I'm just kind of thinking, like, I, you know, yeah. the, like my mom worked in state government, and I'm sure when, if she was ever involved in this, she would copy and paste create out of <laughs> and, you know, that, that leaves some lovely formatting when you do things like that. This is what I probably didn't dwell on. We also uh, um, suggest the good uh, governance um, model mm -hmm. for the agency. So usually agency PIO, we consider a business owner. So this is somebody who should oversee the whole website and put goals and so on for that. But we enforce for every agency to have one web manager, person who is responsible for the menu and for all things like that. So if content creators have some issues, they can go to this person who is very well trained by us, who, who is in contact with us constantly, and this person can actually push so them to, to we delegate it. Yeah. And this is why Mansida would make it much more visible. So this is one flow that we have on the platform, this human aspect that people are putting content in visiting and they do it. We try to really structure the paragraphs and the, what they can do on the platform. And some of uh, agencies feel this as a really strict rules, but that as a result, you get more um, usability out of that and uh, it's more it's consistent. Of course. Yes. Last thing I'll add to is account management. We meet with them regularly. Um, and so one of the things as account manager, I'm the account manager that I do, before a meeting is that I survey their sites, I review things on their sites, and so I'm kind of catching things. So then when I, and I get a crawl for their site too before I go. So at the meeting I can sort of say, hey, I notice you guys are doing this quite a bit, you know, and I catch things. I and mean, then I'll be honest, I'm terrible for finding something wrong on a site and logging in and fixing it. <laughs> you know, especially the copy paste thing, because it's so immediate that it's not our um, fonts and all that stuff. Anybody else? I'm curious about the syndicated content. Are you using Drupal for that? No, that's Elena's uh, baby. That's a good question. I think, uh, I'm not sure. I will give me your contact and I will follow up <laughs> because this is a project our developers, um, maybe Mac mentioned it in his presentation. Yeah. I, will, I will follow up on that. I think okay. they're using Drupal. anymore. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that's it.